So we're fixing to cut a hind quarter. Again, this is a grass-fed beef. We're cutting it based on specific customer instructions. So there's a lot of things we're not gonna get that we could, but we gotta do it based on what the customer wants. Um, I'm actually gonna take a, a second seat. I'm gonna sit down because Kurt, he is our hind quarter master. How many of these do you think you've done in your life? Oh man, I can tell how many I did. Too many, it's but I'll tell you this. Many. He does about 24 of these a day. 24 a day. So he's kind of working on the flank area right now. He's going to pull some of this off. This is just going to be used for hamburger. He's going to give it to me. I'll clean it up. Now he's cutting the flank off right here. Again, the customer wants the flank steak. And I'm going to clean this up. So this is a flank steak. Kirk just broke it off. I'm going to pull this membrane off the top side of it. Kind of trim it up, clean it up just a little. There's a the flank steak, customer wants this. So we're gonna give him a flank steak. So now he's gonna pull the rest of this flank off. He's just working some of this fat out of here. I'm gonna go through this, get any meat I can for hamburger. Now you see him over here, he's working just some of the kidney suet out. Again, we can't do anything with that. Again, based on customer instructions, this is just going to hamburger. Okay. Slow down, Kurt. <laughs> I told him to slow down before we got started, so you can see how fast he is. Slow down. I to slow it. Okay, so again, some of that stuff that we just pulled off of there, we're going to work that into hamburger. So I'm going to go through, pull the red out, separate the fat, discard the fat, keep as much of the lean as I can. And again, there's some different things we could get out of a lot of that, but based on the customer instructions, a lot of it's going to go to burger. So now what he's going to do is just going to pull that rib off. Now he's pulling the peeled knuckle out of there. Go ahead and get up there and see what he's doing. So he just pulled that peeled knuckle out of there. I'm gonna clean it up because these people, they want uh, sirloin tip steaks. So I'm gonna pull and clean a little bit of this up. And again, what you see me discard, it's gonna be used for hamburger. Just gonna square it up. Just gonna go ahead and cut those. When we tenderize stuff, we kinda like to be at about five eighths, no thicker than three quarters inch thick because we're gonna run this through the tenderizer. But you can see for the sirloin tip, for grass-fed beef, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's, that is a good looking grass-fed beef. So I'm gonna cut these steaks. I'm gonna send these sirloin tip steaks to be tenderized. Okay, now it's time I'm gonna tenderize these tip steaks. We run it through two times. Gonna go straight and then kinda angle it a little bit. That is a tenderized tip steak. Looks really good. On these tips, if it shreds, I'm just gonna kind of square it up a little bit. It just kind of cleans that up. Tenderizer will tear it. He's gonna cut, discard this rib. Now he's gonna break his loin off the round. He's gonna take his breaking knife. Cut that right off there. So that's your loin. Now come take a look at this. Your sirloins in this area here. This is the tenderloin, filet mignon, and the strips are on the back side, the bottom side. Now this particular customer wants sirloins, but they also want strips and fillets. So they're gonna pull this fillet and the strip and then he'll cut his sirloins. So he's gonna jump into the round. He's gonna pull this little hip bone out. Gonna get around 
that knuckle. Now again, a lot of guys will use meat hooks, but the culture here, we've always, man, we just always used our hands. For us, it's a little bit faster. And hang on a second, Kirk, let's talk about some. How many times you cut yourself? To be honest with the knife, I cut myself maybe once, but... <laughs> not much. <laughs> not much. Not much. And, I, and how often have you known me to cut myself? <laughs> not much. Not, I haven't heard... I haven't seen you cut yourself. Yeah, right. To be now, honest. I remember one time you but, cut yourself. You cut your hand on that saw. Yes, the worst time I ever cut myself is on the saw, but yeah. with the knife, it's probably a little nick. Every and once in a while. Every once in a while. Yeah, but we... Uh, so we use our hands. We know where they're at. We prefer to use our hands. We use our hands, so try to keep our we hands. We tried meat hooks, but they just slow us down. So he's gonna pull this out, he's gonna throw it to the side. I'm gonna pull some lean meat out of it for hamburger. It's one of the things I like to do is I like to come in here. It's got a pretty good little bit of meat right here. to miss that then I'll clean this up and get some more burger out of it so now what you see him doing is cleaning up the uh, top round in the box beef world that would be called an inside round a lot of what you see in him discard is going to go to hamburger See that shank just a second, Kurt. Now the customer's gonna want some soup bone. It's gonna want some soup bone. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up. And this thing is gonna make some really good soup bone. Check this out. I'm gonna square that knuckle up a little bit. So we like to cut our soup bones about an inch. Off. You can see it's a really good soup bone. You know what that's good for? Soup. This soup. <laughs> it's good for soup. Back in my culture, they use this for all kind of stuff. Oh, uh, your your cur your culture. <laughs> a lot of people. Hey, you're from uh, Jamaica. I'm from Jamaica. Yeah, <laughs> I'm from Jamaica. Jamaica. Is that why you never get stressed out? <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Just be, be happy. Be happy. Don't stress <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now he's going to go ahead and clean this bottom round up. In the box beef world, this would be the gooseneck bottom round. He's going to clean that up. Again, this will be used for hamburger. I'll pull some of the big fat off of it. Now he's fixing to separate the top from the bottom. So this is the inside round, top round. He's pulling it off of the bottom round of the box beef world, the goose neck. There's a separation here. The eye of round is right here. I had to steal your knife because you go too fast. <laughs> you can see, come take a look at this. This is the inside, pulls off that goose neck. This is the eye of round. And then the bottom round sets right here. So we're gonna separate that inside, the top round. Right there. Now you can get busy. Now he's gonna go ahead and pull this femur bone off this gooseneck. When you're doing 20 sides a day, you gotta get, you gotta go fast. <laughs> Gotta go fast when you do a few of these a day. So we, uh, you're gonna see us cleaning this up because we're gonna run these round steaks through the tenderizer. So we wanna kinda get it free of fat. There's the inside. I usually take his stuff and then I'll kinda clean them up, pull any lean meat off of them for burger that I can. Kirk does a really good job. 
So this is the gooseneck bottom brown. Kirk just pulled the rat out. It's good for burger. Now they're gonna want, based on their instructions, the Pikes Peak roast, which is right here, and the rump roast turned into stew meat. So he's gonna pop that rump roast right off there. We're gonna use that for stew meat. Again, based on customer instructions. So this customer wanted round steaks and we're gonna tenderize them. So I'm gonna cut the top round. I'm gonna show you this. Look at this marbling. And again, for grass-fed beef, it doesn't get much better. I'm gonna cut some bottom rounds. Okay, so now I've got top round and bottom round steaks. I'm gonna run those through the tenderizer. Again, I like to get two angles. So I'm gonna go straight down, give it a little bit of an angle. Try to cross that up a little bit. So this particular customer, they wanted stew meat out of that rump and that Pike's Peak roast, so Kirk's gonna go ahead and knock that out while I tenderize these round steaks. One of the things you're always gonna see is that meat cutters very rarely work alone, man. This is a very much a, a team sport. Kirk was my assistant a minute ago, and now I'm his lovely assistant. I was the assistant before. You were my assistant before, weren't you? Yes, sir. I used, to, man, I had to beg you to come to work for me, Kirk. I know. I, <laughs> I'm glad I did now. How long you been working here? Twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah, you good. started when you were like eight, didn't you? I started when uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that young. Yeah. Got a bottom round and a top round. Two of those together make a round steak. This guy right here? Yes, sir. Yep. Fixing to uh, do Kirk's favorite thing. Favorite thing? Split the strips and the fillets. <laughs> yeah. You ain't gotta lie, I know you can hate it, man. I, I don't sell any of this. It's, <laughs> it's like I can do it in my dream. But that's one thing I'm not a fan of. Don't still, like I'm we still, like T-bones around I here. I love T-bone. I'm T still not a fan of it. Okay, you're gonna notice here he's pulling this tenderloin. This would be considered the butt part of the tender. And then it tapers down, which comes to the tail. I'm gonna clean this up. So there's the tenderloin. I'm gonna come over here, pull some of this unwanted fat and gristle out of here. So we've got this tenderloin clean. I'm gonna square it up just a little bit. How thick we want those, Kurt? Uh, the customer want those at an inch and a half. Inch and a half thick. I'm just gonna leave it, leave it whole. I think they want two to a package. So this guy here is just gonna be bonus. Boom, there you go. Okay, he's fixing to go to saw. He's gonna cut this sirloin bone in. Just gonna square it up. You're gonna notice that he throws it at me. Basically, I gotta trim up his dirty work. Again, we pulled the tenderloin off the top side. You're gonna see here that I'm just gonna take this bone right out of there. You can see here, we scraped that bone off of it. This customer wanted it thick. That's a good looking bone in sirloin. All right. Just gonna go ahead and pull this strip off this uh, loin. Tell that you've done that a couple times. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll clean some of the meat off of that right there for burger. Didn't leave a whole lot on it. Just gonna kind of square that tail off. 
that right there, man. That thing, that little skin. That's... Take that off. Nobody wants to chew through that. So he's going to start right here. They want these about an inch and a half thick. So you're going to see him square up. About right there. Clean your tail. <laughs> Let me assist you, Kurt. <laughs> assist. Let me assist you. There's your strips. So that was the hind quarter, Kirk. I want to thank you again. Oh, yeah. He's showing his teeth because he's happy. He's always happy because he's always. Jamaican. Don't worry, be happy. Can yes. you say it for us one time? They always say, don't worry, be happy in Jamaican. That's a big <laughs> thing down there. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Hey, we're going to come back and show you how we grind these things out. Each beef, they go through this grinder individually and specific. So if sides are separated, one side is ground and then the other side is ground. So they don't ever mix. If the beef is both sides together. Hang on a second, Eddie. I'm going to show them this beaver. Come on, take a look at this. So this is the trim. I don't recommend putting your arm in here. You'd probably lose it. So we're going to grind this out once, then we're going to put it back in here, let it mix up, grind it out a second time, and it's going to run through a bulker. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get that first grind, Eddie. Come take a look at this. It's going to grind out. That's one time. You can see here that it's got a lot of fat and stuff mixed through it. You're gonna notice that he throws his lugs over here on this lug rack. We don't like our lugs to touch the floor. That's why you're gonna notice them on the tables or on racks. The floor is dirty, so we're trying to keep our racks off the floor. So he's gonna grind this out one time, throw it on his lug rack, and he's gonna put it back in, grind it out a second time. If you've ever noticed a guy in the grocery store walking around like this, pay no attention, it's just Eddie. These grinders, they're always right here. That's why these guys make good quarterbacks. Blue, 42! Eddie walking around doing that all the time. So he's cleaning the head out right here. He's fixing to throw it back through, run this thing through a second time. Now he's going to go ahead and he's going to hook this uh, bulker up to the end of this grinder. It's going to run out a second time. Now as it runs out the second time, it's going to mix it. So it's going to blend a lot of that fat and stuff together. Then it's going to come out of this bulker in one pound packages and in perfect, beautiful little squares. So you're gonna notice here, these first few run out, they have it, they have it mixed up real well. Plus we're gonna check our weight. It's no loss, because now what we're gonna do is throw it back in. He's got his weight squared away. He's gonna run those bad boys out. You can see how it's blended together, mixed up. So that right there is how that's done. It's going to come out nice little bricks, approximately one pound packages. You can see how it's blended together, looks real nice. That's about an 80% hamburger. Anyhow, Eddie, thanks man, I appreciate it. Anyhow, there you go, that's how we grind one of the beef.